Hey guys, in this video, I'd like to talk about drugs used in the bronchial asthma, right? So when I need to understand the drugs used in the bronchial asthma, we need to understand what exactly is bronchial asthma. Now, when I need to understand what exactly is a bronchial asthma, it's a type of allergic disease. Okay. Now, once it is a type of allergic disease, we need to understand what are the important factors which play a, play a role in the bronchial asthma, right? Now, what are the important factors which play a role in the bronchial asthma? One of the most important factor is airway hypersensitivity. What is it? Airway hypersensitivity. What do we mean by airway hypersensitivity? Airway hypersensitivity is nothing but it is a type of allergic reaction in the airway itself. We can simplify like that. Okay. When I'm speaking of airway hypersensitivity, right? I need to understand what are the important cells and what are the important mediators which play a role there, right? When I need to understand this, so most important cell which play a role in the bronchial asthma, one of the most important cell is mast cell. Now what happens, This, if I consider this as a mast cell, if I consider this as a mast cell, now during the asthma attacks, during the asthma attacks, there is a degranulation of the mast cell. What do I mean by degranulation of the mast cell? Means mast cell will break. Once mast cell breaks, what happens? We need to see. Once mast cell breaks, what are the substances present in the mast cell will be released? One of the most important biologically active substance is histamine. Apart from histamine, we have other substances which are also released, right? Now, let's look what are the factors which play and which trigger the stimulation of the mast cell, right? When I'm speaking of those factors, we have one of the most important immunoglobulin, which play a role in what? Which play a role in allergic diseases that is our immunoglobulin E. Immunoglobulin E, eosinophils will also get activated as well as B cells. Now all three of them will stimulate whom? Will stimulate the mast cell. Now this part I can call it as allergic reaction. Now what happens <coughs> when mast cell gets stimulated, histamine is released, right? At the same time, mast cell is degranulating means mast cell is breaking down mast cell membranes also break down means cell membrane of the mast cell breakdown means it will release phospholipids when phospholipids are released what will happen phospholipids are converted into something called as arachidonic acid now what happens to this arachidonic acid arachidonic acid can enter into one pathway called cox pathway which is most important for what which is most important for inflammatory reaction when i'm speaking of allergic reaction what gets activated that is our something called as lox pathway that is called as lox pathway so what is this lox pathway lox is nothing but lipooxygenase lipooxygenase Okay, now when lipooxygenase gets activated, it will produce something called as leukotrienes. Leukotrienes. Once leukotrienes are formed, what will happen to these leukotrienes? They will go and act on something called as LT receptor. Once LT receptor gets activated, that will trigger the allergic reaction. Allergic reaction. Now, this is the story of our asthma. What happens with the mechanism okay now once i understood this much so because of this allergy what happens in the bronchus that is our next question the question is simplified is so one of them is hypersensitivity hypersensitivity lead to what inflammation inflammation once inflammation happens there is also increased production of mucus increased production of mucus because of inflammation and increased production of mucus they will lead to one thing called as bronchoconstriction bronchoconstriction okay now once bronchoconstriction happens what will happen the patient will have a difficulty to breathe as well as wheezing those are the symptoms of bronchial asthma right now once we know this much we need to understand what are the factors we need to decrease the inflammation inflammation decrease will lead to decrease of mucus then that will lead to bronchodilation means if i decrease inflammation if i decrease allergy where exactly that will be in the bronchus i will be able to treat the patient who is having which this is bronchial asthma i'll be able to treat bronchial asthma right now once i'm able to treat this i need to understand what are the factors which play a role in bronchoconstriction and dilation right now if i take this as a smooth muscle cell from the bronchus smooth muscle cell from the 
bronchus. Now, what will happen? Let's see. All the smooth muscle cells of the bronchus, we have beta 2 receptor. We have beta 2 receptor. As well as we have one more receptor called as M3 receptor, which is stimulated by which substance? That is stimulated by our acetylcholine. That is stimulated by our acetylcholine. Now, what happens if I stimulate beta 2? If I stimulate beta 2 receptor, it will activate an enzyme called as adenyl cyclase. Adenyl cyclase. Once adenyl cyclase gets activated, guys, every time wherever adenyl cyclase enzyme gets activated, it will convert our ATP in the cell into something called as CAMP. CAMP is what? Cyclic adenosine monophosphate. So, because of this adenyl cyclase activation, ATP gets converted to what? CAMP. Now, guys, who will stimulate beta 2 receptor? That is our adrenaline. Yes or no? Adrenaline. Noradrenaline has no action on beta 2 receptor. Once CAMP gets formed, CAMP gets formed, what it does? CAMP gets formed, it will do very simple thing. It will activate an enzyme called as it will activate an enzyme called as protein kinase A. It will activate an enzyme called as protein kinase A. Now, what this protein kinase A does? Protein kinase A will have a negative influence means which will inhibit some complex called as MLCK. MLCK. What is this MLCK? It is myosin, myosin light chain kinase. Myosin light chain kinase what exactly is this myosin light chain kinase this myosin light chain kinase is a factor which is responsible for what bronchoconstriction means contraction of the smooth muscle when i inhibit mlck what will happen usually if i stimulate mlck it will stimulate the contraction once there is a contraction means where exactly contraction occurring in the bronchus that will lead to bronchoconstriction when i inhibit mlck there is no bronchoconstriction means it will lead to bronchodilation. It will lead to bronchodilation. <coughs> now let's see what happens if I stimulate M3 receptor. Once I stimulate M3 receptor, M3 receptor will get stimulated by acetylcholine because it is a cholinoreceptor. Now because of this acetylcholine stimulation of M3 receptor, what will happen? So, M3 receptor is a type of something called as GQ receptor. So, if I am saying GQ receptor, GQ receptor means it is a G protein coupled receptor and its subtype is GQ. Now, once this GQ receptor gets activated, it will stimulate formation of two substances in the cell. One of them is called as IP3, the other one is called as DAG. Now, what is this IP3? IP3 is nothing but inositol phosphate 3. Now what is this DAG? It is nothing but diacyl glycerol. Diacyl glycerol. Now what are these things guys? Diacyl glycerol, IP3 at the same time which we can include CAMP also. All three of them are the secondary messengers. All three of them are what? Secondary messengers. Secondary messengers are nothing but primary messenger here was adrenaline which gave the signal. After that what happened? After that only our secondary signals have been formed within the cell because of primary stimulation. So with the M3 receptor primary messenger will be acetylcholine. Secondary messenger will be here IP3 and DAG. With beta 2 receptor secondary messenger was CAMP. Now why you need to know this? They can ask you in any of the exams, all of the following are secondary messenger except for example option A was CAMP, option B was IP3, option C was DAG. Now they can give you option D one more thing and they will ask you a question. Now what, what else can other secondary messengers? Other secondary messengers apart from CAMP, IP3, DAG are our CGMP. CGMP. CGMP is also a secondary messenger. So, this is a story of our secondary messengers. What happens? IP3 will increase the intracellular calcium. Once intracellular calcium increases in any muscle, either may be smooth muscle, either may be skeletal muscle, what will happen? It will lead to contraction. DAG, DAG will activate something called as, something called as protein kinase C. Now, this protein kinase C 
actually does what? It will stimulate MLCK. If it stimulate MLCK, we already spoke bronchoconstriction. Bronchoconstriction. So, by this logic, we need to stimulate beta 2 or we need to block M3 receptor to cause the bronchodilation. So, if I stimulate M3, what happened? Bronchoconstriction. If I block M3, what will happen? Bronchodilation will occur. So, by this logic, let's simplify some statement. The statement I want to simplify here is stimulation of beta 2 will lead to bronchodilation. Stimulation of beta M3 will lead to bronchoconstriction. Blocking of M3. Blocking of M3. What will happen? That will be our bronchodilation. So, if I need to treat asthma, I need to do bronchodilation. If I need to do bronchodilation to a patient, either block M3 receptor or stimulate beta 2 receptor. Right? So, let's start from a group of drugs called as beta 2 agonist. Beta 2 agonist. Beta 2 agonists are what guys? Beta 2 agonists are a group of drugs. What do they do? They will stimulate the beta 2 receptor. Once they stimulate the beta 2 receptor, what will happen? Beta 2 receptor will cause bronchodilation. Beta 2 receptor will cause bronchodilation. So, the beta 2 agonist is divided further into SABA. That is our short acting beta 2 agonist. Short acting. One other one is LABA. LABA is long acting beta 2 agonist. Okay. Now, what are the drugs which include in these groups? Short acting beta 2 agonist includes salbutamol, salbutamol, and one more thing called as levo salbutamol. When I am speaking of long acting drugs, we have some drug called as salmetrol, salmetrol, and we have one more drug called as trametrol. Okay, apart from the salmetrol, femetrol, we have another group of drugs which are exclusively used in the uterus means during a premature labor, the drug is called as ritodrine. Now, ritodrine is a beta 2 agonist, but it is used in what? It is used in premature labor because stimulation of beta 2 receptor in the uterus causes the uterus relaxation. So, by this logic, what I can do? I can stimulate the beta 2 receptor in a premature labor to cause the uterus relaxation and to prevent the premature labor from occurring. So, ritodrine is again beta 2 agonist, but it is used in premature labor. Premature Labor. Okay, so this is a story of our beta 2 agonist. Now, there are few <coughs> facts about beta 2 agonist. During an acute attack of asthma, during an acute attack of asthma, so what is the drug which we need to use? We always use salbutamol because short acting drugs has what? Fast onset of action. That is why we use salbutamol as a first line drug in the acute attack of asthma right now apart from this we have few things to be answered here that is our side effect now salbutamol levosalbutamol salmetrol femetrol all of these drugs they will have side effect as headache headache as well as one more side effect very important that is our tremors now why these tremors occur tremor occur the tremor occur is the only reason is I see tremors are due to stimulation of the sympathetic system tremors okay tremors are due to sympathetic activation now what is this sympathetic activation guys it's a very simple thing beta 2 receptor is a type of sympathetic receptor it's a type of adrenal receptor when I stimulate them the side effect would be what the side effect would be tremors now <coughs> this is a story of our beta 2 agonist when I'm speaking of m3 receptors right so, M3 receptor could be blocked. Now, I can do what? M3 blockers. Now, M3 blockers, they are as such not a popular drugs for asthma treatment, but they are a drugs for a disease called as COPD. COPD. Now, what is this COPD? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease seen in which type of people? That will be in the smokers. Now, what are the drugs which we have M3 blockers? The drugs include hypertropium bromide, hypertropium bromide as well as thiotropium thiotropium hypertropium and thiotropium 
these are the two drugs but how do we give them the drug the mode of administration not just for m3 blocker for other drugs as well the preferred mode of administration for the treatment of asthma will be inhalation will be inhalation okay now this is a story of our m3 blockers okay now they are as such they are not used where they are as such not used in the asthma treatment and remember one more thing about ipratropium and tiatropium they have a bad taste as well as they are not used systemically because systemic side effects will occur because m3 receptor not just present in the bronchus but they are present in the other location now if i block m3 receptor in the other location that will be a problem clear now chalo let's see apart from this guys let's go back to the, our camp story now camp was formed inside the cell yes or no due to stimulation of beta 2 receptor but camp was doing what it was activating an enzyme called as protein kinase yeah yes or no now apart from this camp will get metabolized into amp camp will get metabolized into amp by some substance by one enzyme the name of the enzyme is phosphodiesterase phosphodiesterase now what i can do if i block this phosphodiesterase more of pka stimulation more pka stimulation more blocking of mlck more blocking of mlck means bronchodilation right so by this logic we can use what pde blockers pde blocker or pde inhibitors pde inhibitors the drugs include doxorubicin doxorubicin we have aminophilin 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 we have terephilin okay now we already figured out all filins are what all filins are pde inhibitor they are used in which this is in the treatment of bronchial asthma they are used in the treatment of bronchial asthma right so this is story of our what story of our pde inhibitors now apart from this guys let's look at this important lox pathway i was speaking yes sir lox pathway means what lox is an enzyme which converts arachidonic acid to leukotrienes now leukotrienes will act on where leukotriene receptors leukotriene receptor stimulation will lead to a type of allergic reaction right now by this logic we can inhibit lox enzyme itself yes sir no? so the lox enzyme blocker the lox enzyme inhibitor what is the drug we have we have a drug called as zelutone we have a drug called as zelutone zelutone is what it is a drug which inhibit the lox enzyme lipooxygenase but do not confuse here because we have one more group of drugs they are what lt receptor blockers receptor blockers lt receptor blockers the drugs include montelukast montelukast and we have one more drug called as zafir lukast we have one more drug called as what zafir lukast now zafir lukast and montelukast they are not just used in the bronchial asthma they are used in the other respiratory tract allergic diseases as well zelitol also at the same time now guys so we know this much at the same time let's look at the mast cell now guys mast cell mast cells are what when your mast cell breaks histamine was released so i can stabilize the mast cell means i can prevent the mast cell from breaking so i can use something called a mast cell stabilizer means what do i do means i won't allow mast cell to break down if i won't allow mast cell to break down means i'm stabilizing the mast cell means what will happen biologically active substances such as histamine won't be released means i'm preventing the attack from happening so if i'm preventing the attack from happening so they are used in the prophylaxis they are used in the prophylaxis now if i'm speaking of prophylactic drugs what are the drugs which work as a mast cell stabilizer the drugs include one of them is called as cryoglycate cryoglycate sodium cryoglycate sodium okay now we have one more substance called as keto dipen keto dipen cryoglycate sodium which is also called as 
crimoline in some places crimogen okay now these are the two drugs which work as what which work as mast cell stabilizer guys we need to understand one important thing here above all this above all this now when i'm speaking of this pathway lax pathway remember arachidonic acid was formed from where arachidonic acid is formed it's from the phospholipids yes or no phospholipids were broken into what arachidonic acid by an enzyme called as phospholipase a2 by an enzyme called as phospholipase a2 now i can block this enzyme phospholipase a2 that will be done by steroid steroids okay now let's discuss about the steroids so when i need to speak about the steroids corticosteroids yes or no there are corticosteroids now corticosteroids are what corticosteroids are anti inflammatory drugs so once they are anti inflammatory and anti allergy drugs now i have two types of two groups of steroids which we can use one of them are called as inhalating steroids inhalating steroids the inhalating steroids include budinosine budinosine and we have one more drug called as fluticasone fluticasone now these two drugs are what these two drugs are the inhalating steroids means in the form of inhaler we just give them in the respiratory tract but if i need to use a systemic steroid means if i need to use the drug orally or if i need to use the drug intravenously i can use hydrocortisone 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 is preferred where hydrocortisone is preferred during intravenous route and we can use prednisolone prednisolone we have tablets okay now these are the drugs which we can use in the treatment of bronchial asthma but but we should not forget one of the most important thing some of them are called as monoclonal antibodies map monoclonal antibody what is this monoclonal antibody simple thing immunoglobulin e is there right if i have it is already an antibody if i have antibody to an antibody means if i have antibody to immunoglobulin e means it will block the work of immunoglobulin e that is omazulimab omazulimab any drug which ends with map it is what it is a monoclonal antibody omazulimab is what omazulimab is a monoclonal antibody which is used in the treatment of which disease which is used in the treatment of bronchial asthma right so this is a story of our drugs which are used in the bronchial asthma few facts before finishing the video one of the most important thing bronchial asthma is a obstructive disorder obstructive disorder now we have one more important thing the most important symptom in the bronchial asthma is is the patient has difficulty to breathe what type of difficulty to breathe that will be called as expiratory dyspnea expiratory dyspnea okay these are the few important things you need to always recall when we speak about the bronchial asthma right so we spoke about this last thing here is one of the most important thing is called as acute severe asthma acute severe asthma is also called as status asthmaticus acute severe asthma is also called as status asthmaticus what exactly is this status asthmaticus guys if i have a person who is diagnosed with bronchial asthma he had a difficulty to breathe then he will take his inhaler once he takes his inhaler after inhaler the patient will not get the relief now what will he do he will repeatedly take the inhaler but even after 5 6 hours of inhaler taking the patient will not feel any betterment that is called as status asthmaticus status asthmaticus is a different thing of acute attack of asthma during acute attack of asthma is what is just a one episode for example he went out he exposed to dust now when he exposed to dust what happened he was he had a triggering attack of asthma he takes the inhaler everything is fine but acute severe asthma even with the inhaler there is no help now that time what are the treatment we need to do one of the most important treatment we need to do is give oxygen apart from oxygen we give adrenaline we give adrenaline we give iv steroid iv steroid okay 
we can give IV aminophilic uh, this is the apart from this now we can also do one important thing we can also give short acting bitter to agonist but once if there is no response to short acting bitter to agonist we should not try it giving it again and again there is no use for it so this is the story of our asthma treatment keep 